Bonjour, mesdames and messieurs. In this video, I want to show you a photo manipulation. Now, if you're a lover of getting it right in the camera and you don't want to do any post processing, please stop this video because it's going to hurt your eyes because we're going to take this photo. We're going to change the sky. We're going to make it into like a selective color. And then we're going to do a dramatic black and white using ancient dodge and burn technique. It's going to be crazy. Stay until the end. The best is at the end. Bonjour, madame, monsieur. So in this video, we're going to go from this photo. You press shift tab LL to show you this photo, which is much more like a fun art photography, which I'm actually going to try to sell in galleries. All right. So let me show you how I did this. So let's go back to the original file. So if you want to follow along, you can just click the link under the video. And once you do that, you kind of come to this page. This was the one from last week, which you can download this amazing panorama. And you just put in your email address. You click on sign up for free. And then it's going to take you to put in your first name, first name, last name, password. Once you do that, it's going to say that uh, your items have been added to your library. Press play for your next step. This is just an attempt for me to sell you all my presets, which is an awesome deal, which you can get. You don't have to go for that. You can just get click. Uh, you can just go to photosearch.com because now you have an account there, photosearch.com. And you go here upright to my library. And there is going to be all the raw files. I mean, almost every YouTube video I have, I have raw files. So they will all be always in your library. You can just open and download them. So I'm going to give you this raw file, which is a Fuji GFX 100S file. It's look at the resolution of the thing. It's 11,648 by 8,736. Look at the detail of this. I mean, it's one of the best, if not the best camera in the world for cityscapes. And we're going to turn this into a really a, a cool fine art. So first thing first, I want to do a bit of retouching. I want to open the shadows a little bit, not completely, bring down the highlight, not completely, just a little bit, just so that we get some um, more details. And then we're going to do the black and white. Now black and white is always vital for me. I always do this step. And for this, if you're on a Mac, you got to hold the option key. If you hold the option key and you move the black slider to the left, what you're going to get, what you see here in black is dots, which are like 100% black, 100% black. There's no more information. And then if you do the same thing with the white and you go to the right, uh, what you see here uh, is 100% white. Now, I don't want that. So I'm just going to go at the threshold, which is about here. Okay, maybe on this one, I, I want to add a bit of texture, a little bit of clarity. I never do clarity when there is clouds, but there is no clouds. We're going to add the clouds. And then... Um, I'm not going to add any vibrance or touch the color in any way, but I do want to make it straight. It's very tilted down because, you know, I was tilting up. Uh, this was uh, in Paris a few days ago. There was no cars. I waited for no cars. And I'm going to go to the transform panel here and click on auto. And boom, it's going to make it straight. And then we are going to go to Photoshop. So I'm going to right click, edit, edit in Photoshop 2021. And uh, we're going to do a sky replacement really quick. All right, so now we just go to Edit, Sky Replacement. And by default, it's going to use the last sky used. Now, this was shot, if you see the sun was there, uh, this was shot during a sunset. And one thing that's very important when you do sky replacement is you got to use a sky that matches the time of the day. So this one, for example, doesn't match. This is like a blue hour sky. It just doesn't fit right. I want something where the sun is here. So I'm going to give you a sky. And what you can do is you can install it here. All you have to do is click here, double click on that sky here. Uh, not even double click. I'm going to go to my Florida sky, which is you can purchase, by the way. You see, that's this guy we're going to be using. So, But I've already installed that in Photoshop. If you don't have this, all you have to do is click on the plus. And here I have a lot of skies, which are my Florida skies, shot, uh, skies which were shot on a medium format camera, which you can use on any photos. And if uh, I have a great deal on that too, you'll get the links down below. But I'm going to offer you this one sky for free. You just click on open and that's going to put it forever in your Photoshop. Now it's here. I can just click on it and it's there. And um, basically that's all I'm going to be doing because all I wanted was that sky to be in. And um, the colors don't really match. It's totally fine because we're going to try to do some cool black and white. So then I just go to File. I'm going to click on Close and Save. And that's going to reintroduce this into Lightroom. Now, uh, 
One thing that's vital also is that if you can like this video, just smash that like button. That would be amazing because it really makes a difference in the YouTube algorithm if this video is liked and if it's commented. So if you can just take a second, actually tell me what you would like to learn, either on Lightroom, on Photoshop, on Luminar, on the, you know, on different photography techniques. I'm always looking for ideas. I try to do a video a week. So if you can just leave me a comment of what you would like to learn, that would be really helpful. Plus I'll make maybe a tutorial just for you. And if you can like that video, that be, means the world to me. Really, it means the world to me because it helps other people be able to find this video. So thank you for doing that. Okay, so we're back here and now we're ready to do our black and white. Now, on this one, I want to make something a bit artsy. I want to make like a selective color black and white. So let me make that screen a little bit bigger so you can see better. And so I'm not going to go here and turn this photo into black and white. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do a selective black and white. So for this is I'm going to go here to the HSL panel. And I'm going to basically, um, all I want is keep this sort of uh, red here. Uh, yeah, this this sort of blue, white, and red photo. So, um, well, maybe I don't, I don't need the green, so I'm going to make the greens completely desaturated. I made the aqua desaturated. Now, the blue is going to be a problem because it takes the blue. Oh, not really. It doesn't really take the blue out of here. Okay, purple. I don't think there's... Yeah, there is purple. All I care is to make sure that my flag still is on. And maybe the magenta. Yeah, magenta. See, I cannot do the red because it would... Tur I, I want to keep the, the flag on. What about orange? Yeah, see, I can take orange out. Uh, not completely, just a little bit. And yellow. Yeah, I can take the yellow out. So now it's almost black and white except um, the flag. So what you do is you take a brush... And this is the only time I actually do that. You make sure that your feather is 100%, that your flow is 100%, and your density is 100%. I want a really powerful brush. Um, make sure, double click on effects so that everything is done to zero on your settings. And then desaturate all the way to minus 100. So what this brush going to do is wherever you brush, it's going to desaturate the colors. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to desaturate the colors. First, I take a big brush to do like almost everything. And then once we get closer to the flag, I'm going to go and turn on auto mask. Yes, because auto mask, I'm going to press shift and zoom in. What auto mask is doing is basically, you see that little plus? It's If, if I click here, it's going to desaturate everything but the flag. I, but if I, took, if I take the plus, let me show you. If I do that, you see if I, the plus is on the flag, it's going to desaturate the flag. I don't want that, so command Z to undo that last thing. So make sure the plus never goes into the flag and it just helps to make sure that you desaturate everything except uh, the um, except the flag. Uh, you see it's, uh, yeah, so when you're far away from the flag, you can actually take the auto mask off. Uh, like here, I'm pretty far away. I wanna make sure everything is black and white except the flag, see here I have. And whenever I am close to the flag, uh, then that's when I use heat. I still have some colors here. That's not good. I want to make sure you don't have any color left. What a cool photo. I, I really like this photo. It's actually the best I ever took of the Arc de Triomphe. Been shooting this place for 15 years and this is the best I ever got. I mean, that's the one at least I like the most. Okay, and when you get close to the flag, boom, that's when you put auto mask on and then make sure the plus stays outside and I will be able to make everything black and white by the flag. It's just a cool effect. People love it. I'm telling you, people love it. It's a little cheesy, but people love it. Okay, good. So now we've got everything black and white. Uh, and um, we got everything black and white except the, the flag. Now, that's, that's just the beginning. Because now we make the Ansel Adams technique, where I'm first going to click and drag and darken the top of the photo one time. Okay. Just one time and make a big gradient. Then I'm going to remake another gradient just for the very top, and I'm even going to go a little bit darker. But I don't want to influence the Arc de Triomphe, so I'm going to go here to Range Mask Off. I'm going to go to Luminance, and I'm going to use that. You see? So th what that's going to do is, you see, the gradient is in front of the Arc de Triomphe. No, it's behind. In front, behind. So it's going to avoid making the Arc de Triomphe darker. I'm going to make a second one here, a third one, sorry, for the bottom. Uh, I'm going to add a lot of contrast because I love black and white. That's contrasty. And I'm actually going to do a technique called clair-obscur. Clair-obscur is a very fancy French word to basically you make things dark and 
like this and then you relight it. Now, how do we relight this? Well, I'm gonna relight it with two techniques. One is the, the circle. I'm gonna double click here on effect so everything is you know, at zero. I'm gonna add a bit of exposure and try not to go over 0 0.5, okay? Then you need to go here and make sure your feathering is all the way to 100, invert it, and then click and drag. So now, you see, it's like I have a little lamp. Uh, actually, you know what, on this one, maybe let's make it a tad, maybe let's go to 0.65, yeah, not more than that. And you see, that's what it's gonna do, it's gonna break, it's gonna break um, the luminosity, the luminosity. You see how I've got the same gray everywhere on the Arc de Triomphe? Now, if you do it too strong, if you do it like this, it's gonna be visible. So, a good rule of thumb is try not to go you see that value here, like 0.70 is the max, the max. Then once you have a value that you like, you can just right click and duplicate it. And then I'm gonna put another one maybe here. And see what happens with that. Let me um, make sure your show edit pin is on auto. I'm gonna put it on never so you can see. So you see what happens now is that we have gray, gray, gray. It's a bit brighter and then it gets darker again. It just makes it a little more interesting. And the key point is not to put it everywhere, but to put it just in some place. Actually, you know what? In this photo, I think I'm gonna go a little higher. I'm, for some reason, it's not really very powerful. So I'm gonna do one here, duplicate, maybe one here on the clouds. You see here on the clouds, it's too strong. So don't hesitate to tailor made it, you know, make this one a bit less strong. And I'm gonna right click, duplicate, maybe put one here like that. Okay, and usually when I wanna do really kind of fancy fire, actually, let me put one on the, on, on, on the, um, I'm gonna put one here on the on the on the flag, on the French flag, maybe I'll make it a bit brighter. Okay, cool. And usually I do two pass when I do that. I also take a brush and I double click on effect and I put the exposure, same thing, like 0.7 max. I go down here, I take auto mask off, I make sure flow and density is in the 70s, and then I just make my brush a bit smaller, and I'm gonna paint here a little bit of of uh, white. It's very uh, maybe because my flow and density is so low, so maybe just add a little more. Yeah, la. And, you know, but the key is not to do it everywhere. You know, between the brush and between the um, the brush and the circle, they sort of get mixed up and, uh, you know, makes it, it makes it like an interesting photo. And usually at this point, what I do, I think the overall photo is still too dark. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go to my whites and I'm gonna boost my whites, which is, whites is gonna take anything which is bright, Maybe make it a bit brighter. It's a little too strong, and um, and so let's compare it to the first one that I did. So I'm gonna click here because I've already done this before. See, that's my first version. Um, yeah, much brighter. I did it much brighter. Oh. You see, every time I retouch a photo, I get a different result. There's a lot more red on the on the flag, but I actually like I kind of like more what I just did with you guys. A little more moody, but you know. That's the power of raw files and, and Lightroom. You can do whatever you want. I can open the shadow and make it much brighter. I can make it much brighter. I can make it much darker. At this point, it really is your choice. So I hope you enjoyed this. I challenge you to uh, download the video, download the photo, download the sky that I'm giving you for free with this, uh, with this. You can also buy all my skies if you want. You have the link down below. And um, you can post this on your Instagram as long as you credit me at at photo surge, at photo surge, it'd be amazing. And if you put it in your story at, uh, and you use the hashtag at photo surge, I'll share it to my followers, which is over 100,000 people. So you might get some followers in a way. And also I like to see what you did. Voila, let me know in the comments if you like this kind of tutorial, what else you would like to learn, very important for me. Because you know, when you have to do a video every week, you know, it takes a bit of imagination. So if you can help me on this, and of course, please, please, please smash that like button. I really appreciate your help and I will see you in the next video.